Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss dark energy, expansion of the universe, and I guess more importantly, a recent scientific study and a major data release from one of the biggest surveys essentially trying to understand how the universe is growing and what's going to happen to the universe in billions of years from now. The survey known as DESI, Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, that's essentially conducting a five-year study in order to create the largest three-dimensional map of the entire universe ever. And it's doing so in a very intriguing way, by essentially looking at individual galaxies and collecting spectroscopic data from them, or basically collecting various colors, and how those colors are redshifted, in order to then position those galaxies somewhere in that 3D map based on the redshift of individual galaxies, thus allowing the researchers to create a map of an expanding universe going back 11 billion years, and possibly even farther back. And the way it does this is by literally observing 5,000 galaxies every 20 minutes, 100,000 galaxies every night, and obviously a few million galaxies every single year. But in the process of doing these studies, the researchers already started to make some somewhat, I guess, difficult to explain discoveries, and we'll talk about some of them today. But before we talk about the discoveries, I actually wanted to briefly talk about how all of this is measured and why this is also kind of important to understand. Because here it does tell us a little bit more about how the universe behaved right after the Big Bang and how we know so much about the universe based on modern observations. And here, in order to measure the expansion of the universe, the researchers relied on a very interesting concept known as BAO, Baryon Acoustic Oscillations, sometimes known as the Cosmic Bubbles, or basically bubbles formed right after the Big Bang. And this by itself is a really intriguing concept. And I think it's best explained by this video from Castro. You can find the link in the description. Now, in essence, BAO is a pressure bubble. And it's a pressure bubble that formed in the first few thousands of years of the existence of the universe. Before the matter existed, everything was so hot that no atoms existed yet. And so during this time, the entire universe was dominated by energy. And so all of this starts pretty much a few thousand years after the beginning of the universe. And it was super, super hot and actually did not allow light to travel anywhere. And to some extent, even behaved like a kind of a liquid. And though light could not travel, the pressure waves could. And so in certain locations, there would be certain overdensities that would suddenly produce pressure waves traveling away from the center. And all of these individual pressure waves would kind of do this. Now, at first this was really small, but as it spread away from the center, it started forming larger and larger density waves. And these were just basically density waves inside this pure energy. But as the universe cooled down, eventually, 379,000 years after the Big Bang, it got cold enough that the energy started forming first atoms. And we actually have a lot of evidence about this event, which is now visible as the cosmic microwave background, CMB. And so this is essentially known as the period of recombination the period of the formation of matter from all of this energy. But all of these individual pressure waves that were traveling inside the energy suddenly froze. As soon as the matter formed, the pressure waves stopped and basically created these unusual overdensities all across the universe. They were all visible as individual bubbles, and each of them contained just a little bit more matter than usual. And interestingly, this is exactly what we expect to see around the universe. Each of these bubbles is known as BAO, Baryon Acoustic Oscillation, and each of them seems to contain just a little bit more gas, a little bit more galaxies, a little bit more of everything. But interestingly, by observing the distance from the center to the end of the pressure wave, we can then actually start making conclusions about how the universe expanded over time based on where we actually see these bubbles and based on the overall size. And well, it turns out that... As the universe expanded, so did the bow. And more importantly, generally they seem to be relatively similar in size, and so by observing them in different parts of the universe, we can then basically see by how much the universe grew. But the best way to do this is by looking at as many galaxies as possible in order to then try to investigate where these bows are and how much they changed over time. And that's pretty much exactly what was done by recent studies using DASI. By using the overall galactic clustering, the researchers were able to figure out the overall size of these objects and their change over time in the last 11 billion years. 
But obviously this is not an easy task, as you can see from this image, because a lot of these bowels sort of interlap, making the overall observations somewhat difficult. But in essence, we expect to find something like this. And surprisingly, that's exactly what has been discovered in the last few years. I mean, it doesn't look as organized, but that's the overall picture. And one of the biggest discoveries from 2023 was actually a discovery of one of these potential bowels extremely close to us, practically on our doorsteps. But this one turned out to be much larger than expected. It actually still has no explanation, but you can basically learn about this discovery in one of the videos in the description. We'll actually talk more about this once there are additional updates. And so in essence, these unusual bows are kind of like, I guess, the music of the early universe. These unusual oscillations resulted in the formation of overdensities, which then led to gas, galaxies, stars and planets. All formed as this music that seemed to have existed for the first 370,000 years. Which kind of reminds me of J.R.R. Tolkien's idea of the beginning of the universe as a kind of a song as well. There are definitely some really cool parallels. But that song obviously stopped 13.8 billion years ago, and so now we just see the result of this as the universe keeps expanding. It's actually quite likely that we are also in one of these overdensities, because usually that's where we find the most amount of matter and most amount of gas. Although for this study, in order to get an even more accurate data, researchers also used approximately 450,000 quasars by looking at the interaction between their light and the gas the light passes through on the way to planet Earth. Because that actually allows them to then map the density of gas between quasars and us, which then basically makes this map just a little bit more accurate. And that of course allowed the scientists to create what's known as the cosmic ruler, or basically a way for us to measure distances in space and more importantly, measure the expansion of the universe over time. But in this case, a completely independent measurement, different from previous measurements, such as using supernova, using cosmic microwave background, or using specific types of stars, such as Cepheid variables, which allowed the researchers to calculate independent values for the expansion of the universe, and then compare them to other measurements. And I guess that's where the mysteries kind of start. Here the results suggest that the universe is definitely expanding, and is definitely accelerating, but may have slowed down recently compared to a few billion years ago. Or just to rephrase this, based on the observation of 6 million galaxies and approximately 500,000 quasars, focusing on the last 11 billion years, the researchers discovered that the Hubble constant maybe is not so constant after all, or at least there is definitely something going on with the value and it might have changed over time. And that of course highlights the problem known as the Hubble tension, what you're looking at right here are different measurements for the Hubble constant in the last decade. And though most of them seem to be kind of similar, they're not the same. Quite a lot of them are quite different, and many of them seem to disagree with the overall value. Moreover, by looking at different parts of the universe, the value potentially changes as well. And so there's definitely something going on here, and nobody currently has any answer. Here are actually just some of the recent measurements and recent analysis, and as you can see, even here, the values always seem to be kind of similar, but not exactly the same. And so this is what's known as Hubble tension, it currently has no explanation, and it seems to get more and more complicated the more data we get. But that by itself is, I guess, not surprising. Mostly because it was really only in the late 90s that the researchers even discovered the universe is accelerating the expansion. They actually won the Nobel Prize for this. And though today we refer to this concept as dark energy, it's only been known for just over two decades and there is basically no explanation. There was even a significant speed up in the expansion approximately 6 billion years ago, which is visible in this diagram from NASA. And so something is up with that lambda or that constant and the data here seems to confirm it. But I guess the stranger new discovery is the fact that even though it was speeding up 6 billion years ago, it might have slowed down recently. Which in essence implies that maybe this is not really a constant from the formula, maybe it is some kind of a particle after all, and there are just some parts of the universe that have more of this stuff and some parts that have less. Or maybe there's just really no explanation. The data suggests something is happening, the observations are very clear and here we have basically like millions of galaxies confirming this, and more importantly, some of the most detailed and most robust analysis so far basically confirms it using the biggest data we have. And that is both exciting and I guess somewhat unnerving. Mostly because it suggests there are definite issues with the modern cosmological model known as lambda CDM. Lambda in there, by the way, is that constant. But luckily for us, 
this is still not over, and this survey is going to be going on for at least one more year. The next release is going to be in late 2025, and will actually provide us with the most amount of data required to either confirm this, or possibly discover something else entirely. Either way, the calculations from the survey suggest that the constant, or the acceleration of the universe, is approximately 67.97 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So kind of putting it almost exactly in that red line you see on the left. One of the most common values for the Hubble constant. But extremely different from some of the other observations, and actually the majority of observations, that discovered the value to be closer to 73 kilometers per second. And so yeah, there's definitely some kind of a crisis in this cosmological model. Especially because observations using much closer supernova or Cepheid variables, the stars very close to us, the value almost always comes up at about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And the difference is very significant. But maybe not significant enough to break everything. In terms of physics, this is only 2.6 sigma, so like, interesting, but not a super confident value. Either way, a lot of these discoveries are basically guiding us to possibly once and for all answering the questions about the universe and finally understanding what it was doing billions of years ago, what it's going to be doing in the future, and how all of this ends. Is the universe going to be growing in size exponentially, eventually ripping apart, or is it going to shrink back and maybe restart the process once again? You can actually learn about some of these concepts in some of the videos in the description. But at least for now, this is a really exciting release of data, and once again confirms that modern cosmology definitely needs more studies, more analysis, and more data. We still don't actually have the exact answer for what's going on. And that means we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some exciting updates. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.